then I'm excited to bring you this tutorial on how to take down bone. This first tutorial is just for the riser, but I'll have a second tutorial that will be for the limbs and I'll put a link here. A takedown bow is a great way to go for your first bow, because even if the limbs break, the work put into the riser isn't lost and new limbs can be acquired or made. Okay, so here is a list of tools that you'll need, and here is a list of tools that you don't need but will help. 1. You need to decide what you want your riser to look like. The main factors that need some thought are the angle at which the limbs will sit, the grip and making it with enough length in order to fit the window. I highly recommend googling the takedown bow so you can get an idea of what they look like. And then you should start sketching, but here are some numbers you can work around. Total length is typically 500mm with the grip made so the arch of your hand is placed in the centre of the riser. And the angle which the limb sit is around 15 degrees. If you're planning on making limbs from the other tutorial then it should be less than that. I explain why in that tutorial. Once you have decided what it's going to look like, draw a one-to-one -one scale outline of it. 2. You need to find and select timber. I'll be laminating boutique timbers, but if you don't want to pay for the wood, you shouldn't have to if you use a plain solid piece. You just need something hard. Having said that, the wood I'm using was donated to me. If you are going to laminate, then pick timbers that will complement each other, which to me means contrasting timbers. The timbers I have here from top to bottom are blackwood, hairy oak and forest oak. They are all Australian timbers. If you are planning on using a solid piece, then you have to tolerate this first part of the tutorial on laminating. Note, this is for basic straight laminations as opposed to having curved laminations. Cut the timber to width, I recommend around 50mm. Once this is done, I recommend placing the timber on your outline so that you can get an idea of what it will look like and help you decide on the order of wood if you're using more than two types. Notice I've used different thicknesses in my timbers. I like having this difference, but this is all down to personal preference. The glue I use is an epoxy called Techniglue. This is very good glue. However, it can be expensive since 750ml is the smallest amount available. I recommend epoxy glue because it's waterproof and is a good gap filler, but there is no reason why good quality PVA glue won't work. So even though something like Aerodite wouldn't be as good value as Techniglue, it would be cheaper for a once-off use and I recommend it over PVA. 3. Gluing. Before I get into clamping, you should be covering both sides of the joint with glue, remember, wet to wet. Also, epoxy doesn't like smooth surfaces, so you should scratch the wood up. An old broken hacksaw blade is good for this. When clamping, for the best results, professionals will apply constant pressure to the joints while it's curing. Simply clamping the timber will not give a constant pressure since the wood and glue can expand or contract. So the best method is to clamp a hose to the timber and then pressurize the hose to around 60 psi. However, this is a little unnecessary for us. A simple method that will yield the same results is using weights to provide the pressure. I recommend around 40 to 60 kilograms for this size job. This may seem like a, not a lot, but is nowhere near the amount of force that can be produced from clamps. However, this method will only work if your timber is dead flat. Even 60 kilograms will not be enough force to close sharp or bows or kinks. So unless you're unable to put the timber through a thickness, so just clamp it. I know I just explained why you should avoid clamping, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not ideal. The clamps you can see here are just keeping the wood in line because it becomes surprisingly slippery once glue is applied. Quickly, if you are going to clamp it, it's common for amateurs to tighten the clamps too much, so my advice is to tighten the clamps so that all gaps and bows are closed, and then just a little more. Curing time will depend on the glue you're using. In the case of epoxies, they are all going polymerization, and this reaction always speeds up with increased temperature, which is not a problem with the glue I'm using, but with more common types of epoxies, which are typically 5 or 10 minute cure times, which is probably not as much time as you may want to get all your timber glued and clamped, as there is no time for mistakes. So therefore, if you're using a glue like this, and especially if you live in a hot climate, do all you can to keep the glue cool while you're putting it together. Glue at night after it's cooled, and put the glue in the fridge beforehand. For those who haven't used epoxy before, it comes in two parts that you mix together and then is applied with a thin piece of wood or sheet metal, that anything that represents a spatula. You should avoid getting it on your skin, but it's no tragedy if it happens. All that talk about temperature applies the same if you want to speed up curing once it's clamped. Epoxy loves heat. I know with the glue I've got, I could put it in the oven at 100 degrees Celsius and it would not damage the glue. However, the laminations would likely crack when it's cooled due to such a large temperature range. But you're sweet to heat it up to 40 degrees Celsius if you want to speed things up. One final note is that when you clamp the timber, you have goo oozing out everywhere. I recommend wiping off the excess because it's easier to do it now rather than when it's rock solid. Four. 
Now that it's all glued, it's time to trace the outline onto the job and begin cutting. By far the easiest way to do this is with a bandsaw. If you don't have access to one, then the bulk of the material can be removed with a wood saw and the final shape finished with some wood rust. I actually paid $15 to get it cut on the bandsaw at a furniture place, but then ended up changing my mind, cutting more wood off, gluing more wood on, and now I'm shaping it with a wood saw and rasp as well. Essentially what we've done is cut a 2D shape. Now we're going to flip it 90 degrees and cut more 2D shapes into the wood. The best way to do this for the window is to cut down to depth multiple times and removing most of the wood with a chisel and finishing it with the wood rasp. The depth of the window should be a little past halfway of the thickness of the timber, i.e. this is half plus half the width of the arrow so that the arrow will sit in the middle. As you can see, I'm finishing my window with a radius which I'm doing with the drill bit. Yours doesn't have to end like this, you can simply have it taper off into full thickness again. However, if you are going to use a drill bit to get a radius, you need to drill in from both sides, otherwise it will mess up the wood as the drill exits the timber. Shaping the grip depends on your hand shape, size and personal preference. Just be careful not to remove too much material. You may also want to remove some of the timber from the bottom half of the riser since so much has been removed from the top. While you're not trying to make the riser symmetrical, it does look better if it's at least somewhat balanced. Now that we've cut out the two 2D shapes at right angles to each other, now it's time to turn the hard edges into soft curves. I've only done it for the grip, but you can do this on every edge if that's the look you'd prefer. Now, if you're making this riser to suit limbs you already have, then you'll do this differently, but for everyone else, 5. I'm using stainless M10 countersunk bolts 70mm long. M10 simply because anything smaller looks too small. I'm pretty sure M6 would be strong enough though. I will warn you that these bolts are much more expensive than standard gal coated hex bolts, but I, th but I think how good they look is worth it. Okay, drill a 10mm hole 15mm from the bottom of the limb supports and then countersink so that the bolts fit snug inside. Care should be taken when countersinking as it can be rather difficult to do when it's on a curved surface like this one. Now, the last step is sanding a nice finish on the timber, but before I get into that, 5.34298080095. If you feel like putting a feature like this bell section here, now is the time to do it. 6. Before I start actually sanding, I use a metal file to remove any large gouges left by the wood rafts on the flat sections of the riser. Then I use 60 grit abrasive paper to do the same on any curved sections. Be patient, now this is the longest step in the sanding procedure, and if you don't get all the large gouges out, then they will be there to haunt you forever. After that, double the grit to 120 and remove the scratches from the last sandpaper. Continue in this manner with multiple grits. I use 60, 120, 240, 400 and 600. You can probably stop around the 350 mark, but it doesn't hurt to go higher. If you don't care about how the riser looks and only care about the function, then you need only sand the grip until it's comfortably smooth. 7. The final and my favourite step is oiling it. I normally use a 2 to 1 linseed oil slash kerosene mix, but here I'm using some random furniture oil polish. Use whatever you feel comfortable with. And now, froth up on how good your riser looks. Well, thanks for watching. This is my first tutorial, so feedback is very much appreciated. Some things I was unsure about is whether I should include material prices, and also having watched the video does seem a little rushed, so you know, let me know because I plan on making more videos. Also, if you have any questions, I'll put an update video here where I'll answer any commonly asked questions or problems that you guys are having, or any updates that I have. But if not, just PM me here on YouTube. Lastly, I did put a lot of effort into this video for you guys, so I appreciate any likes. Add me on Google Plus. My name's... Yeah. Like. 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 Like.